Everybody knows that an investor doesn't invest in a business. They invest in the entrepreneur behind that. And they would rather take an A entrepreneur with a B business than an A business with a B entrepreneur. Now that the entrepreneurs are returning from San Francisco, they're really starting to look inward and evaluate one another's ventures. I think Village Capital represents the pinnacle of the community that we've created. Who's really ready for investment? Who's ready for Village Capital? If Dan Epstein were to recap this trip, he would say three words. Straight slay glory. Straight slay glory. <laughs> it's straight slay glory. <laughs> hey, and you look at that. Wow. That's tragically beautiful. It's good slay to be here. 25 brilliant entrepreneurs working on ventures in 17 countries and hailing from six continents will convene this summer in Boulder. Living under the same roof and sharing the same meals for 10 weeks, they have convened in Boulder this summer for one reason, to create ventures that future generations will remember as having changed the world. Ventures that will effectively address a social or environmental need, that are financially self-sustaining, and that will ultimately scale to meet the needs of at least one million people. It's no big deal. I know you guys a few days ago took a 22, 23 hour bus trip, all of you, to San Francisco and met with venture capitalists. For us, San Francisco was actually really awesome. I think it sounds like there's, you know, a bit of a feeling in the air of not walking away with money was, um, you know, frustrating for a lot of people. But for us, we went there not seeking money, we went there seeking the potential to engage with, um, with you know, m maybe funders in the future. I, I value this experience so much. Um, just by pitching in front of investor has given me so much knowledge in how I can go about it and I got critical feedback. I have a meeting set up with three grand foundations and my co-founders flying to New York in a week to have more in-depth meetings with them. Congratulations. But, uh, in, in my opinion, San Francisco was good but not great. A lot of people got some very valuable contacts. It's hard to know how many of those are actually going to turn into capital. It'll take a couple of meetings. It'll take the development of some relationships. So I think the next couple of weeks will reveal exactly how meaningful San Francisco was for a lot of these entrepreneurs. Although the mentors are primarily here for the entrepreneurs, there's a fringe benefit for us as the Unreasonable Institute in that they mentor us as well. One night I was incredibly lucky to be able to grab a drink and share a conversation with three exceptional mentors. Well, cheers, thank you. Yeah, Bye. cheers. Bye. Cheers to you guys. Cheers. On my right is Mark Mathieu, former vice president of global brand marketing for Coca-Cola. Who better in the world to talk to these entrepreneurs about how to market and create distribution channels to the bottom of the pyramid? It's actually interesting to see how they each arrive to the yeah. institute yeah. and how then they will all leave as part of one community. Yeah. Sante. 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 Salud. All right, salud. The world. On my left is Ray First, a brilliant serial entrepreneur who's also a professional poker player and has taken that love for risk and applied it to incredibly innovative investment models. What's unique about um, Unreasonable Institute is the residential aspect. Yeah. Right, that's yeah, the secret that sauce. has not yeah. been explored at all in this community as far as I'm concerned. Calculating the logistics of lost stuff when on the spoken things could then happen between us and once all those were done and we got through love. We would shoot from the hip, reacting off of the cuff, splitting up at the fork. And across from me is David Bordstein, arguably the most prominent author in this space of social entrepreneurship and his books catalyzed and inspired a lot of our entrepreneurs into the work that they're doing today. The goal of this institute as I see it is not necessarily to launch 25 ventures but to launch 25 human beings who are going to be really powerful in the world whatever they choose to do. The Global Summit is the culmination of the entrepreneurs 10 weeks at the Unreasonable Institute. There will be about 150 people in the room who are investors, who are local entrepreneurs, who are supporters. We are projecting 15 million in revenues by the year 2015. That's a scale that will double the income of 
tens of thousands of farmers across Latin America. But we cannot reach them without this new equipment, you know. 20 kilowatt FM transmitter and 800 feet antenna. I have been informed <laughs> that we can raise the money here in the U.S. to buy these equipment. <laughs> and that is why I came. <laughs> they're, they're really starting to look at one another closely, uh, evaluate one another's ventures and try to determine who's most aligned for investment. 22 entrepreneurs working on ventures in 15 countries hailing from six continents have presented before you today with a strong conviction that they will trailblaze the type of impact that we're all here and that we all hope to see. And I hope that for the rest of the evening, for the weeks to come and for the years to come, that you join us and you support them and that we take them to the stars together. Thank you. Money can also be a divider in a community. The village capital, the Unreasonable Village Fund, is, is an incredible kind of noteworthy experiment for that reason. Be they invest in each other, three investments, that's all that's made. It was a huge question of would they compete against each other. I think they're competing against failure together. Tonight, you are going to pitch to your greatest supporters and your toughest critics, each other. Instead of a casual conversation with a follow-up that might turn into investment, there is real money on the table tonight. You're going to rank one another, and the top three ranked are going to receive actual investment dollars directly from us. I feel good. I think that looking at the ventures that are going for it, whoever gets it is going to be really awesome. You know, I'd love for it to be us, but at the same time, I'm going to be really psyched and happy regardless of what happens by the end of today. We think it's a great way to get social enterprises on the ground and actually funded and do it really quickly. And so I hope that if we get it, we can be really successful and help the program continue. I'm not going to bore you to death again with the same presentation they have seen over and over and over. What I do here is talk more about a couple of questions I heard in the last week about my venture. You guys all know me pretty well, but I just wanted to tell you a story from my high school days. First want to say I wish I could be there. Uh, this evening and now feel a fire as we all do uh, to make sure we get some form of financing. This is something that could be uh, an amazing resource for us. Uh, we would have everyone uh, move to Seattle, which is what I'm doing and why I'm not there. How do you plan to bring LabAM to market? If it took you four months to sign one school and you're looking at 30 campuses in, with the 75k, how, how much time are you looking at and like with one extra person how do you plan to reach that scale? Are you essentially kind of relying on disaster relief in order to be able to remain profitable? We've got the amazing advantage here of having lived together for 10 weeks to be able to observe what someone is like as an entrepreneur and really get to know the insides and outs of their ventures. There's more than, more than enough people that are very ready for it. I don't think I've ever had such a huge responsibility in my life. <laughs> you know, I mean that's $225,000 that I have three hours to decide what to do with. In the last like 48 hours, I've kind of gotten a sense of um, seeing into the future, a possible future for the world, knowing that some of them will fly, some of them won't, but whatever happens, something else will come of it. I really got a lot from the 30 minutes interaction with each of the fellows. This is really a, kind of like the, the gem of uh, the mentorship program. This ability to have you know, personal conversations with people uh, that then you can carry forward after your visit here. Real heartfelt commitment to building a better world and using their energy and talent to, to make real change happen. This place was really special. <laughs>